Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Last time I did a video showing you that with an adder crossbow I was able to completely penetrate a bulletproof police issue German vest. And um, there's been a lot of criticism about this. All I was saying is that they should really put something hard inside of these vests because I think just because it's a vest is, uh, makes a policeman halfway safe against being shot with a bullet. Um, there should also be protection against knives and crossbows, which is basically the same thing. Like a, a broadhead arrow, it's pretty much the same thing like a very pointy dagger. So therefore today we're going to test it against something completely different. Military issue SK4 grade uh, vests that are not only proof against bullets, but also against shrapnel. Let's see how crossbows fare against that one. So the reason why the crossbow uh, broadhead bolts were able to penetrate the police vest is because that vest is just using like Kevlar nets, like, you know, webbed textile to stop a bullet. And it works because the bullet is blunt and it cannot really cut through the Kevlar web. Uh, but a sharp broadhead can and so can a pointy dagger. So that's why normally a, 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 a step proof vest has something hard inside. Now, of course, military issue SK4 grade vests are completely different beasts because they have really thick ceramic parts in them. And I want to show you one of these because these are usually done in a way that you can actually look at what's inside. So if you look inside of these beasts here, you can see this is what we have inside. It's like, it looks like bone almost. And I think it's ceramic stuff. It's super, super hard and super tough. I don't think that any crossbow on the planet has a chance to penetrate through this one. But let's see if we can at least do some scratches into it. <laughs> this actually was ex-Italian army and therefore they also have protection in the backside. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> of course, a good vest must have uh, you know, protection on the back side and I'm absolutely sure that Italian soldiers are certainly the bravest type you can ever find. Uh, in any case, as you can see, because theirs are really effective against shrapnel, they have additional padding here and here. And that is because if the stuff comes upwards like this, this is it's set as an angle, I guess it's also to protect the face. So, um, and, and I, I think that yeah, there's no chance that the crossbow can penetrate through one of these plates let alone through two. But we'll find out. Now, of course, we have no real human being that can wear that vest when we shoot at it. So I was thinking to use this dirt bag, and that's the same one, like a, you know, chopping bag filled with dirt that I was using before, but now it's so cold that this is frozen solid and I can't even lift it off the ground. So we have to find something alternative, and I've chosen this cardboard box. So this box actually has been stuffed full of cardboard, so it's really, you know, pretty proper. And uh, I also put a stone underneath and I put it against this wooden backrest so that it wouldn't fall over with the first hit. And now we're going to test three different crossbows against it. We're going to test the adder crossbow, then we're going to ramp it up to the siege, and then we're going to use a Hex 400, which is a really seriously powerful single shot crossbow with uh, a lot of uh, force. So let's see how they fare. So first I'm going to use the adder and I do have the Venom Extreme throwing arm on it um, and that's basically just so that we have some kind of a chance. This should give us around uh, 50 joule of energy, maybe 35 foot pounds or closer to 40 maybe. And we're going to use three different arrows. We're going to use a, uh, uh, a, a Botkin and then we're going to use a Hunting Arrow and then we're going to use an Edgetech 200 which is usually more effective against bone. I don't think that any of these balls have any kind of chance against the vest, but we will find out. Okay, let's go ahead. First of all, we have the Botkin tip. Okay, that bounced off. Now we have the hunting tip. It actually sticks in. Interesting. And now we have the edge tech. It also bounced off. 
let's inspect the damage. First off, I think it is really interesting to see that the edge tag clearly penetrated a bit. I hope it comes over in the video. Well, the botkin is very slightly deformed, but I think it was used before, so I think that could have been because of an earlier hit. And it also looks a little bit polished, so I think it also penetrated a good while. Whereas, of course, the uh, hunting tip sits in firmly. So let's try to get it out, okay. Now, the hunting tip did suffer a little bit, but not too much, actually. It broke off at the tip a little bit and it also bent slightly, but it clearly penetrated and stuck in. No danger for the wearer of that vest, of course, but interesting to see that even this little crossbow could do some damage to that plate. Let's pull the plate out and inspect it. So yes, this is where we hit it. And um, I'm actually using different parts of the plate so that we won't get confused afterwards. So, but as you can see, all three uh, arrows really stuck into that kind of a plate here and even on the back side you can see that at least two of them left kind of visible dents so it almost made it through it's going to be very interesting to see what more powerful arrows uh, will do to it so we're moving over to the seat which is basically the uh, bigger cousin of the adder it has compound throwing limbs and those output about 75 joule compared to the 34 joule that a normal stock adder has and the 50 joule that an adder with the venom extreme uh, throwing limbs has so this is outfitted with the gogun magazine and also with the new front guides to give the uh, weapon more um, accuracy since it's like also guiding the magazine in the upwards direction and I don't really have botkin tips for this right now so we're using field tips and we're using a hunting broadhead and we're using an edge tech 200 okay let's do this kind of funny to shoot with the gloves on but who cares all right the field tip sticks right in now comes the hunting broadhead gonna go a little more to the right all right it also sticks in and now comes the edge tag tip i go a little bit left all stick in solid wow okay as you see they all stick in really solid let's pull this one out first okay so that wasn't very deep this is the field tip wow oh. look at that and now the hunting broadhead which is kind of in there solid okay now the tip broke off of this one but not very much I'm going to be interesting to see how the plate fared so the damage is actually quite spectacular these are the three hits and at the back side you can see that they even poke out of the back a little bit I mean they didn't penetrate but it was very close okay now we are ramping up the game by using the hex 400 by EK archery so this is, uh, this is still a very affordable crossbow, really affordable, but it has really high, perf uh, high performance. It has about twice the energy that the Siege has and about three times the energy that an Adder has, or even more than that. Um, so it's very powerful. Yes, there are more powerful crossbows on the market, but the difference is rather small. So I would say if this one cannot penetrate it, then I think whoever wears that vest is safe from crossbows. <laughs> well, this one, of course, doesn't have a magazine, and I have to use this rope to cock it, which is rather, rather tedious and slow, but, well, it's got to come from somewhere. So let's go ahead. And we will be using a botkin tip and two different kind of broadheads. Now, the difference is that this one has these cheesy little wheels in them. I think they are actually counterproductive. And this one has a little bit of a thicker tip. Not sure if it comes over well. It has some kind of a thicker tip, which I think is also not very good for penetration. But we will find out. And of course, we will always begin with the uh, botkin tip. Okay, let's go for it. I'm funny with the I think it doesn't work with the gloves. 
Whoa. <laughs> Onto the broadhead. Going a little bit higher. Okay. Okay. Trying to go a little bit lower now. Whoa. That one didn't do very well. <laughs> okay, so this one actually completely deformed. And as I thought, the wheels have been counterproductive. So you probably can see that the, these little stupid little wheels were shifted back. They were not able to penetrate at least, but the tip penetrated. So pointy works, like round does not work. <laughs> okay. Now this is the other broad head and I can already see that it is damaged. So I think that the blades kind of shattered. Let's see if we can get it out anyway. I think we can. Oh, oh it sticks in hard. So the blades broke off, but it was definitely sticking in very hard. Now the botkin is sticking in super hard. And I'm not even sure. I think I have to put the vest down to get it out. Let me do that. All right, I got it out. And it seems like it's the only tip that survived without any danger. So this one is kind of super intact. Now let's see what it did to the plate. And we have penetration. <laughs> funny so the botkin tip and the uh, one of the you know the one that broke off actually penetrated all the way but of course it would not have done any harm to the wearer of the vest that's absolutely for sure but it's still i think mighty impressive to see what a crossbow can do to a plate like this absolutely astonishing so what do we learn from this well first of all a military grade sk4 um vest uh, shrapnel safe is actually also protecting you well against crossbows even more powerful ones but you can also see that you know against a powerful crossbow you actually need something like that to be on the safe side like a weaker vest would definitely not have saved whoever would wear that thing so is my advice to german police now to ramp up and use these probably not because they are super heavy and actually a lot of soldiers are reporting that under the load of this they develop all kinds of back problems and so on. Don't forget that fighting men are usually not in their 20s. They're more like in the 30s, 40s, 50s like myself. So, uh, you know, and we older guys, we have issues with back pain and so on. <laughs> in any case, don't underestimate crossbows. That's my message for today. Hope you like this. Thanks and bye bye. Oh, and by the way, should you be in Vegas for the SHOT Show uh, end of January um, 2024, I'll be there. So maybe you can see me on the show floor and I'll be at the Midgard Messer booth. Oh, it's more like a table every once in a while. So yeah, just uh, if you want, call on me. <laughs>